Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Welcome to the unboxing review of the Bosto 16 HD Creative Stylus Display Tablet. So Bosto got in touch with me to see if I'd like to review their 15.6 inch digital drawing tablet and seeing as last year Wacom, Huion and XP Pen really dug into this versatile size range of tablets designed to sit at your computer and also fit into your bag, I was curious to see what other competition was out there. And so links of course in the description below if you're curious and in the card shipping container you're going to have a display ready white card box with some nice artist character renderings on the front, some Bosto logo and barcode along the side and then a plethora of visual information on what this tablet can do on the back. It's always nice to see a tablet come in more than just a warehouse box and take an interest in presentation. This cover is in fact a card sleeve with a further white tablet box inside that contains all of the product specifications on the back. But as with all of my tablet reviews, I'm not a technical specialist and I'm really just interested in what this is going to be like to use from the point of view of an artist. Inside, you are firstly greeted with a felt material branded slipcase for the tablet itself for when you might be throwing it into a bag alongside your laptop. And below that is a Bosto thank you card for choosing their product. You're welcome. Then in a plastic seal is the tablet stylus itself, which we'll take a look at in a moment. And below that sitting in a vacuum formed white plastic tray is firstly their 8192 pressure levels battery free stylus that has a very firm feeling nib, a solid rubber pen pot, which is a weighty material that does not unscrew, but does grip the pen well. And also inside is a folding black plastic stand with metal arms for using the tablet on a desk and it's very similar to what you might find with some of Huion's smaller displays as well. Then in a further smaller card slot you have the all-in-one multi cable which keeps things simple when on the move. The opposite card box then houses the rest of the peripherals. You get a baggie containing the spare nibs as well as a cheeky Bosto USB memory stick and then you have a branded smudge guard glove designed to keep your lead fingers free for delicate stylus use while stopping your hand's natural oils from smudging up the screen over time and letting it glide smoothly over the surface. And then you have the tablet contents and setup guide, which I'm never going to read. And then lastly, a branded dust cloth for keeping things clean. As for that tablet screen itself, it has an overall flat edged slate design in a hard black plastic shell with a fair few silvery plastic buttons around the edge. And it looks like it's just thick enough to take some weight. So all in all, you can expect to get the shelf ready box, felt slip cover, the Bosto tablet itself, as well as the flat folding desk stand, a dust cloth, an all in one Lilu Dallas multi cable, the 8K pressure pen, weighted pot, tablet instructions, the spare nibs, USB memory stick, and then not forgetting the thank you card and the smudge guard glove. Now, it is worth mentioning that online and in some descriptions that I've found, perhaps of a previous model, there should be a USB charger for the stylus pen, but this model is in fact battery free. Now, firstly, it's worth talking about that all-in-one multi-lead, which is designed to reduce the amount of clutter for more portable tablets that you might be setting up and taking down on and off again whilst on the move or on holiday. The cable feels pretty firm and hefty and designed so that one end with the HDMI and USB plugs go straight into your laptop, Mac or PC, while the other end's smaller HDMI and USB-C plug firmly into the deeply recessed ports along the tablet's right hand edge. The screen itself is powered directly through that USB connection, so then it's just a case of peeling off the screen protector and you're good to go. So this is what the Bosto 16 HD Creative Stylus tablet looks like when you've got it in a fairly spacious desk setup like mine compared to my main 27 inch monitor. Also side note, I learnt today that my PC can only handle two screens at once despite having three ports on the back of the graphics card, which is why my other monitor is off. 
The front of the tablet has a very clean look to it with all of those silvery plastic buttons kept around the edge, and a second layer underneath that screen protector does give it a slightly textured feel, but also gives an ever so slight mattening effect to the visuals, which otherwise pop fairly well. The 15.6 inch 1920 by 1080 p screen sits closely under a flat smooth surface that runs right up to the edges and it does seem to put the tablet design over the ergonomics, i.e. it looks quite good, but might feel a little less easy to use. However, those screen colors stay consistent at up to 178 degrees, giving it a very wide viewing window, which is great, and also the screen feels very close to that surface, resulting in minimal parallax. Lovely. Up in each corner is a grouping of eight dots to mark the placement of some of the very small buttons that run nearly flush along with the top edge of the tablet. And these are in fact Bosto's programmable quick access keys, which can be found on either end of the top edge, depending on if you want to use this tablet for right or wrong handed use. The dots themselves are placed on the front as you actually have no line of sight to the buttons when using the tablet, and without them, your fingers would easily lose which one it might be floating over by touch alone. The clean slate design of the tablet has certainly come first before the ergonomics of the quick access buttons, but having them on there is certainly better than not at all. And along the outside edges near the top, you will also find a recessed scroll wheel, which is Bosto's answer for zooming in and out of your work. It feels very much like a slightly firmer wheel action that you might find in the middle of your mouse. And those buttons along the top are small enough and close enough together that they seem designed for a younger user or someone with smaller hands as you'll only be pressing them with the tip of your finger, and they have very little travel at all. Now, I've not personally before come across another tablet which has taken this particular design option for their buttons, and you will want to have it tilted up to comfortably wrap your hand around it to get your thumb on that wheel. As for the buttons along the top, I did have to do a cheeky awkward reach around in order to press them, but that's still slightly better than having come away from your tablet completely in order to press keys on your keyboard if it's going to be breaking your workflow. Now it is great to have these options available for either hand, but worth noting that it's far more awkward on the right hand edge for left handed users, as you can't quite get a controller style grip around that edge due to those connecting cables. But further down that right hand edge you do have four more larger buttons which are for the tablet screen settings, allowing you to adjust your brightness, contrast and screen color temperatures. And I did find that the brightness and colors did need bumping up just a bit. As for the hard plastic flat folding stand, it's built up by having two different folding metal brackets that raise up to link into one of three different slot options, going from a more shallower design option on the desk or using the bar for something a bit steeper. It has four rubber grips on the underside that does actually make it sit pretty firmly in place on the desk, unless you're going to give it a good thorough push, and it has two small folding arms at the front bottom in order to support the bottom edge of the tablet and keep it in place. The stand actually suits this size tablet perfectly, so no complaints, but do be careful if you're adjusting the stand's angles whilst the tablet is on it, as you'll likely be peering over the top and you don't want to tip the thing onto the floor by accident as it's not locked in place. It does however sit there nice and firmly when you press your weight onto it over the screen area without wobbling the stand itself or sliding around, which is great. As for the Bosto 8192 pressure levels pen, it's got a mildly textured single plastic body with some silvered ends, and as mentioned, it is battery free. It has a flared area near the nib for comfort over time when in use, and the two buttons on the edge work just fine. Now the shape does feel a little bit chunky and dated compared to some higher end 8K level pens, but the nib itself sits very firmly in place with no spongy movement at all. Now ideally you want to find that sweet spot where you get a minimum amount of movement so that the 
pressure of your brush strokes translates into a change on screen for your line size or opacity instead of just a springy movement. But this nib might be a bit too rock solid if you're used to at least a little bit of feedback as you do your work. Now if we take it out with the nib changer provided, you can see that these nibs run much deeper than you might find on another stylus pen, so it might be that something a little bit different is happening with the equipment inside. The weighted rubber pot is a single thick solid piece, so it sits well on the desk and because of its texture it grips the pen very well, locking it firmly in place. And also you get that cheeky little 16 gigabyte branded memory stick in a minimalist metal case with a tiny ball chain. It's a very basic thing to add, but also a very nice touch to find it included with your tablet. I did also have a cheeky go at plugging those tablet cables directly into the back of my Nintendo Switch docking station, and it did give out enough power to run the screen for video games, which is good to know if you're packing a bag for a holiday where kids need to be entertained, but as this tablet has no audio out or speakers, you will need to plug your headphones directly into the Switch. Now firstly, you want to go to the Bosto tablet website to download their latest drivers for the 16HD, which was all absolutely fine. But when installing it, I personally found an error telling me that the WinTab32.dll file wasn't quite kicking in properly and my computer was not registering the pressure sensitivity. Now none of this was the fault of Bosto. But in fact, due to a host program for my Radon graphics card settings getting in the way. Now, this took me a bit of a while to work out, but if you have a Radon graphics card in your computer, you just want to end the program in Task Manager before installing the driver. And following that, the tablet worked fine with Photoshop registering the pressure sensitivity straight away. But you might need to also go into your display settings to set the tablet screen as the main monitor if you're mysteriously getting touchscreen selections coming up on your main computer screen. So in the driver settings menu, I personally turned their first unused pen button over to the eraser, ever so slightly increased the sensitivity of the pen strokes, and then customized the eight quick access keys which for me personally was going to be Control alt z for the lead button to be my undo, then Control, alt and shift followed by Enter, Escape, Save and Rotate for the rest of the buttons. Now, this as well as being a pen display tablet is also a touch screen, and you can use your fingers to navigate the on-screen functions much like you would expect with an Android tablet. The gesture support worked straight away in Photoshop to allow zooming and rotating by hand, and in the driver menu, you can also ensure that the palm rejection kicks in the moment the tablet recognizes the pen, which is something I strongly suggest you make sure is turned on, just to stop it from thinking that whenever you rest your drawing hand on the screen, you're trying to zoom or move the canvas. And you can also go into the settings menu to turn the touchscreen off completely if, like me, you tend to be happy enough with just using the manual scroll wheels on the side. And so there are plenty of interesting bits going on with this tablet, but for me, the proof is in the pudding. So I sat down for an afternoon to draw a simple illustration and get an overall feeling for the Bosto 16 HD. And so now I'm just going to give you my general overall opinions. Well, firstly, I do quite like this tablet size. It's large enough for you to lean into for a long session of work while sitting at your desk with the computer without feeling too cramped, and it's also just small enough to pop into someone's bag or some overhead luggage packed alongside your laptop. And the fact that it's powered directly via the USB from your computer saves the need for more cables or a separate plug charger. Now, having a touchscreen function that you can easily turn on and off is great, but when trying to zoom in and out of my work, I did find it to be a bit clunky and it would often take a couple of attempts before registering my gesture, and using that touch function to rotate was even less responsive. But that being said, Bosto were in the middle of improving the driver software and touch sensitivity and I was actually working with a pre-release version, not quite the final, at the time of making this video. So that may soon all be smoothed out, 
When it came to using the quick access buttons on this tablet, although I certainly wasn't navigating them by touch alone, as they are eight small, smooth, tightly grouped buttons that you can't directly see, I did find myself using the undo button right on the corner and the rotate button at the other end without much fuss, only really getting lost in the middle. And because it's a mechanical action instead of a touch bar, the scroll wheel on the side actually worked perfectly well for zooming in and out of my canvas. As for the screen quality, the image itself was nice and sharp, but even after some adjusting, I did find a fair amount of colour discrepancy in the red tones compared to my main monitors, and I found myself checking on another screen to see how the art looked from time to time. Now, the pen itself has essentially no give in the nib, which for me personally made it feel a little bit too firm and unresponsive, if I'm going to be extra picky, and it wasn't quite sensitive enough for my lighter gesture strokes. And because there is barely any nib travel, you do find yourself digging in quite hard in order to hit the highest pressure levels. Now, it certainly did do the job, just not quite with the same finesse or responsiveness that I've otherwise enjoyed in some competitors' pens. And as mentioned, underneath the removable screen protector, there is another thin screen cover layer that gives it a matte finish and a very slight sense of texture compared to a smooth screen. And it's also just interesting to note that in the world of dedicated drawing tablet screens, Bosto are one of the very few brands outside of Wacom that are actually investigating touchscreen technology to go along with their tablet stylus pens. So my overall thoughts are this. With all of the bells and whistles going on with this tablet, you've got the touchscreen, the hotkeys crammed in, the memory card, and all of that very visually exciting packaging, I'd say that the market for this tablet is somebody who's just getting into digital art and looking for their first tablet screen, or alternatively, someone who's just looking to see their money go as far as possible, as far as options are concerned, as having a quick look at the Bosto store on their AliExpress website, I can see price-wise it's certainly undercutting competition of the same size. So I'd certainly say that this is a tablet which does the job, and I'd recommend it if you're looking for something on a very tight budget, or perhaps looking for an ideal gift for a younger person. But beyond all of the shiny extras, the core thing for me personally is always going to be the pen and screen experience, and it doesn't quite hold up against some of the slightly more expensive tablet brands. Although to be fair, I don't think that it intends to either. So if you are a serious artist looking to get into digital, or someone who's already well versed with digital tablets and just looking to find something that's more portable, I'd say that you might want a more responsive screen to pen experience than this. But that being said, for what it is, this is a great box set to get somebody into some digital art, especially coming from a much less widely recognized tablet brand. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the Bosto 16 HD Creative Stylus Display. Well done! So a great big thank you to Bosto for sending one of these over for review, and again, if you are interested, the links are of course in the description below. So if you have any questions or thoughts on this tablet yourself, or any other troubleshooting tips about getting it to operate like I did, then get yourself into the comments section below. And of course, make sure you're subscribed for more reviews and art stuff in the future, because it really helps me out. And I'll see you next time. Take care.